Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, back to Trailmaker's High Seas, and I found some new sea life. It's life that I haven't seen before until just now. Um, so last time we built this sub. It's a cargo sub that is capable of doing quite a bit, and I've destroyed half of my uh, magnets. I mean, tractor beams. Don't worry, we can repair real, qu real quick. There we go. So apparently these things are actual physical objects, it looks like. Yep. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Look at that. But in this episode, um, I want to focus on building a brand new aerial vehicle that is designed for this map. Man, these things are dangerous. They just, they just eat right through you. Look at that. They literally just, it's like they're made out of like high energy lasers or something. Wow. Anyway, so yeah, we built a big catamaran a couple episodes ago for exploring the surface of the ocean. We built this sub for exploring underneath the surface of the ocean. And now I wanna build a dedicated aerial craft. So basically the idea that I'm thinking is I wanna do another drone because if we're gonna pick up things that are elevated in different areas of mountains and stuff like that, uh, we need to have that fine control to be able to hover around it, hover over it. What is this? It's an artifact. All right, well, I, I guess I'll pick it up. How far do we have? We have pretty far to go back here though. You know, let's just, let's get all these vases and bring them back to the volcano port. So anyway, as I get distracted, um, my idea is to try to build a windproof drone. Oh, there's the sea slug thing, centipede worm. Yeah, we followed that thing around for a while in the last episode. Didn't lead us anywhere, but it certainly is an epic creature. All right, so somewhere over in this direction is another vase. Hopefully it is not, oh, it's not hard to pick up at all. It's just literally right there in the open. Ooh, 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 there's a treasure chest hiding over here too. There we go. All right, and there we go. Okay, so I guess I'll go around the back to this one, and then we'll work our way up to the front over here. Oh, here's some of those underwater lava pools. There should be bubbles coming up from this like crazy, just turning the water into steam instantly. I don't see anything in here right now, though. I was thinking maybe there's a vase that is being hidden in one of those areas. Oh, we got a treasure chest at least. Oh, there's steam coming off of this one. Oh, this one is... Oh, there's a difference it looks like. This one's actually red hot. The other one was kind of like cooled down. It was more blackish than actual red. So there is steam coming off of this one. That's really interesting. Doesn't look like there's any artifacts in there though. Oh, another treasure chest. I feel like I'm close enough. There we go. All right, here is the next vase. I'll just get this one head on. Perfect. And now we need to circle around to the right here. Oh, another, another uh, treasure chest over by the... See, this one's darker. So there's no steam coming off of this one because I'm pretty sure there's like a hardened shell um, on the top of this lava, but there's probably definitely some fluid uh, lava underneath. Fun fact, I've actually been within feet of flowing lava before. As some of you may know, the OG fans of the channel, I used to live in Hawaii. I lived there for about nine years. And one day I went hiking out to some lava flows and it's, it, it's hot. <laughs> like it's even hotter than you would imagine. It's any skin that is exposed to the lava, like within a couple of feet, it feels just like instant sunburn. It's kind of crazy. But man, this is a really cool place to explore. I like this area. All right, looks like we got one more up ahead of me. It is down below the, oh, is that it there? Oh, I guess that's it over there. All right, so we'll just swoop by and pick it on up. And that is five artifacts all at once. Look at that. And there is our teleport portal. Coming on in. Hit. <laughs> yes. It actually worked out great. All right, so as you can see, I got this sub in slot number three. This catamaran is uh, slot number four for me. So we have the underwater and ocean-based ones. And then this is the drone. Uh, and this drone is not built for water. <laughs> You can see, let me get back up to the surface real quick. Yeah, so this drone was built for stranded in space, which has no wind in it. So you can see it's got like, uh, it's got tail fins and stuff on here. It's not really a cargo based drone. Like it's not meant to build, to pick up a lot of things. Uh, so it's really inconvenient to drive this thing in this map because my fins and stuff were designed to help me keep going in a certain direction, whatever direction I'm facing. But when it comes to dealing with a headwind or uh, a wind at any direction, actually, 
it prevents me from facing where I want to face and tries to also uh, always make me face into the wind. So that's why I think it's time to redesign a brand new drone and have it capable of picking up a lot more and a lot easier than what this one is capable of. So basically, a windproof cargo drone. So I'm just going to delete this entirely. We're going to start completely fresh. And I think the way I'm going to have to do this, this is going to have to be circularly symmetrical because no matter what direction it faces, we want the wind to have an equal uh, force on it no matter what. So I'll be able to keep oriented in whatever direction I want to be. All right, so let's get building this thing. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, this thing was kind of a nightmare to program out and build and try to like get everything situated and being symmetrical as much as I can. So the way that I've done this is I have a lot of mini thrusters in here because I wanted this to be more powerful than my last drone. So here's how this works. If I press shift, uh, it'll turn on a couple of gimbal jets and that just allows me to be lighter. And then I can press space to actually lift off. And yeah, so with those gimbal jets activated, I will fall very slowly as opposed to with them not activated and I'll just fall out of the sky and that happens. Oh boy, hold on. Oh no, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on. All right, and as you can see, I got a whole bunch of magnets around. <laughs> so I have a whole bunch of mini thrusters in here and all of those mini thrusters are programmed up to do what they, to activate on the appropriate key. So if I press W, all of the forward facing thrusters will activate. If I press A, all of the thrusters that will cause me to turn left will activate and I press D and so on. And then I also have a strafe mode. So all the thrusters facing to the right will strafe me to the right and then left and so on. And so I also made it relative. I wanted to keep it as small as I could while having a bunch of tractor beams so that I could hopefully fit into smaller spaces. But uh, yeah, so this is the thing that this is. This is what it looks like. It does, the, the thrust, the center of thrust is a little bit high, unfortunately, but I don't know if there's a whole lot I can do about that right now. I might just have to deal with it. I mean, it shouldn't really be that big of an issue, I hope. Um, and as far as the color scheme goes, if you're wondering, uh, that's because this thing is pretty symmetrical all the way around. I wanted to have a very, very clear indicator of which direction was forward and which direction was backwards. And uh, yellow is forward and black is backwards. And I just chose those colors because that's kind of the theme I've been doing with my other stuff, yellow, black, and white pretty much. All right, so to put it to the test, let's go over to the Sub-Zero base since this is the new area. And let's see if we can find any stuff along the ice uh, glaciers. And we're gonna see how this thing feels. It should be relatively uh, stable in the wind. Like it shouldn't matter what direction I'm facing basically. And I think it's just it's just gonna be a matter of controlling my speed and stuff. So here we go. Let's get down on this one. So now I don't need to, as opposed to the other drone, I am not going to need to drop directly down on top of it anymore. I should just be able to whiz by them and pick them up. And oh, look, this is we're already finding a whole bunch. And yeah, as far as wind goes, I'm not really feeling like the wind is doing much of anything. It does feel a little bit weirder trying to fly it around without the tail fins because the tail fins always allow me to kind of direct my force in the direction that I'm facing. This is a much more of a hovercraft type feel where um, I have to kind of face the opposite direction and slow myself down. Otherwise, I'm just gonna blow right by it. All right, oh, there's another one over here. Let's see how many we can pick up. They're going, honestly, they're, they're going closer to the bottom of me than I was expecting. I was expecting them to be more outside. Okay, yeah, so here, here's the big issue with this one is slowing down. Actually takes a really conscious effort. All right, here we go. We got a bunch of books. We're gonna be learning at the uh, Arctic Scientific Research Base. It's just all books. I wonder if that's a coincidence. Look at that. We're we're like a spaceship now with a tractor beam. I mean, it's we really are kind of literally that. So that's all I can see up here. There's one that's negative. That's underneath the ice, I'm pretty sure. I don't know if there's anything else surface wise. So now let's see. Can I drop these off up here? Uh, whoop, I almost forgot what direction was forward. Yeah, there we go. Yellow is forward. All right, let's see if I could drop this stuff off without going inside. Oh, look. Oh, my goodness. What have you done to me? 
What? I lost one. There it is. That was violent. You gotta be careful. I should have let go of them. All right, here it is. Found the book again. We're just gonna have to return this one. So that's four objects that I've carried with this one at a time, which is twice as much as I've ever done with a flying vehicle so far. No, 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 stop with that. I don't like that. All right, so I think we've pretty much covered... That is... Oh, wait, there's another one over in this direction. It must be underwater. I can't see. Oh, is it there? Oh, there it is. Oh, I could have had five. I thought I already got everything. Man, that's disappointing. I could have tried to see if I could get five. All right, well... Let's get this while we're here. I'm just going to get all of the surface ones that I can get with my drone in this area. And then we'll teleport to another area and try it over there. So let me try to actually drop this one off. All right, ready? And drop it. There we go. Now it's not going to violently destroy me. So if we look around, you might notice that there is an abyss teleport point in between the volcano and the sub-zero base. There is a mighty mushroom teleport point in between Green Haven and Sub-Zero. There is a skull of Atuin between the Green Haven and the Tiki Wharf. However, I haven't found... Oh, here it is. Never mind. I found it. There's something over here. Sunken Peaks? Let's see what this is about. All right, let's look on the map. Whoa, this is interesting. All right, let's get in our drone. Let's lift up and see what this place is about. Is it all red things? I mean, I kind of feel like there must be one on every single uh, leg here. Man, look at these waves. These waves are massive. Yeah, so after I get all of these uh, limbs, whatever artifacts are on these limbs, after I get them all revealed like that, I'm, I'm going to go underwater because I want to see what the underwater of this place is like. If there must be something going on underwater, right? All right, what about this one? This one can't be empty. There has to be some, yep, there we go. All right, we got, this is a colorful area. We got some red ones. We got some blue ones. There we go, that one is revealed now. I think I accidentally picked it up. Here, let's drop it real quick. I don't want to take it just yet. And now, you ready to go underwater? Here we go. Oh no, not into the rocks, not into the rocks. All right. Let's see what is down here. Man, these waves, the current is intense under here. This is kind of crazy. Look at these flowers and everything. There has to be something under here. I'm not seeing any artifacts yet. Oh, there we, oh, no, that's a treasure chest. All right, well, we can get some gold at least. There we go. This is so weird, I'm not finding any. There are these clams. Do these things, do these chomp down when you go inside them? Let's try to find out. Um, oh, oh, what's happening here? Oh, they do! I had a feeling. I had a feeling that was gonna happen, but like, what, man, look at what the current, the current is taking me all over the place here. That's kind of crazy. Yeah, you can see the waves as they go up and down. This whole body of water is moving along with that stuff, making it really difficult to control this. All right, I want to do that again. That is kind of awesome. I really like that. All right, let's repair and get out of here. All right, so we actually have um, man-eating clams. This one looks weird. This one isn't even open, is it? It's not. Why aren't you open? Do you have- are you hiding secrets? What kind of secrets are you hiding? Alright, well. I don't really know if there's a way to open those things. But it didn't look like there was anything in there. Man, I'm just finding treasure chests all over the place around here. But nothing other than treasure chests, fla big flower things, and clams. Oh my goodness, these waves are so big! They're throwing me around. The closer you get to the surface, the more they throw you around. All right, I need, I need to get out of here. You ready for this? Here we go. Okay, that didn't work. It did, it did not work. All right, hold on. I gotta try it again. Go back to sub. All right, ready? There we go. Transition from land or from water to air. Okay, so we got two red ones and two blue ones. So let's do a multicolor pickup. We're gonna go over and get this red one, drop off the blue ones, 
and then drop off the red ones. We'll pick up some more red ones over here too. Let's see if we can pull this off. All right, here is number one. See, that's how I want them to be, like outside of my, on the outside, sideways, not underneath me. I feel like I'll be able to carry more this way. Oh boy, okay, I think the wind is actually kind of affecting me now. All right, here we go. The wind is affecting me a little bit. It just always gives me, you know, it's always giving me some resistance in the direction that the wind is pushing. So I got to counteract that as I'm regulating my speed. But other than that, it doesn't really affect me differently depending on which way I'm facing, it seems like, which is good. All right, so I'm going directly into the wind now. It looks like I can go like 90 kilometers an hour into the wind. It's a lot easier to slow down when I'm going into the wind, of course. Uh oh, oops, straight left. There we go, just trying to regulate my speed here. And pick that up, great. That's three out of four for this island. There we go, this is great. Okay, so now this one's definitely underwater, so I can't get that. We'll get this one over here. So we have four right now. This is the most we've had. So when I pick up this red one over here, this will be the most I've carried on a flying vehicle. There we go, back up. Oh, oh, what happened? I had it and then it just like, it didn't stick. All right, there we go. All right, we got it from that side. Perfect. All right, I'm a little bit scared of what's gonna happen here because this, do I have, I think I just have one blue one. If this blue one drags me down like it normally does sometimes when I drop stuff off, I might lose all of my red ones. But let's hope for the best. I'm gonna go higher here. No, 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 let go of me. Let go of me, let go of me, let go of me, please, 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 no. Um, all right, there's not a lot I can do about this. All right, you know what, actually, maybe there is. I'm gonna turn into a sub, or I need to get out of this. I need to get some space. I turn into a sub. That one's gonna float, that's fine. And then I can pick these up as a sub. There we go. And then I just bring them back to land. Now I can transform back into drone and pick these ones up. All right, perfect, got them. All right, oh, there's a, uh, well, what? Altitude 229 meters? What is up there? We have to go investigate that. 229 meters up in the air? Okay, what, oh, what? Oh, I think I had that on me. Oh no, that's gonna reset in the water. Okay, that was flying through the air and uh, Trailmaker does this thing where it only calculates physics around like a bubble around you. So it got frozen in the air for some reason. And yep, yeah, that was that one. Okay, we gotta go back there and get that, it looks like. Yeah, so that's, um, I'm assuming that's a bug where it doesn't just take it off of your tractor beams, but your tractor beams remain attached to it as the teleporter's trying to retrieve it. And sometimes that, that's not good when you're having different color things that you can't just drop. Although I could just add a tractor beam on a separate control and I could try to figure out which one is which and drop the right one at the right time. But uh, that seems a little much for a vehicle like this. So, well, we'll just get it back and we'll head over to the volcano and drop these ones off. All right, there we go, no problem. And now we just head directly north to the volcano. We can pick this one up on the way. All right, here it is. Oh, I gotta be really careful. If I touch the lava, it's gonna destroy whatever it touches. And I don't know if that applies to artifacts yet. I've never had that issue. And this is why I don't like that they're hanging down below me like this. All right, at least there's no wind in here. Gentle, 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 come on, yes. Okay, that was close. All right, let's just drop these things off. All right, another four artifacts dropped off. Okay, one of them didn't get dropped off. All right, got it. And there we go. All right, I think we did. <laughs> that was an explosive barrel. All right, I just, I just wanted to get down to the ground here. There we go. I think this drone is uh, serving our purposes tremendously. It is a lot more windproof than the last version. We can face any direction we want without the wind affecting us better or worse. We can pick up tons of salvage, at least five, probably even more than that, but we've done five in this episode. The only thing that's left to do is explore some of these other areas and just get all of the salvage.
But yeah, I wonder what's down. I haven't explored much of the Skull of Tatooine area if there's more over there. I didn't have good vehicles when I was first discovering some of these places, especially these mushrooms. I haven't even gone underwater in the mushroom area. Yeah, we got a lot of stuff to discover. Let me know if you have any suggestions on what you'd like to see in the future of this high seas campaign. Hope you guys all had a good Christmas. You guys get anything good, any good games, anything like that. Let me know down in the comments below. If you want to see more awesome stuff on the channel like this, then you're going to want to check out the end screen right here. Hope this video has earned your subscription. Anyway, this has been Scrapman, and I'll see you next time. Bye.